Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking back in on the major five names here. We have a, US, a slew of U.S. earnings this week. We had a bearish reaction to CURA, RIV, KSHB. All three reported yesterday and all three are down today. GWPH just reported pretty neutral reaction, not a whole lot going on on GWPH. Then we had another few names just report as well, forgetting off the top of my head. But for me personally, I don't get a whole lot from the initial you know, blip that we get of those earnings. It's what the market reacts to that I care about. So I wait for the following day to see whether it's a bullish or bearish reaction. And the vast majority of the time in this market environment, we've been having bearish reactions. I did a talk with Midas Letter again today. That's going to be a weekly thing pretty much every Tuesday from now on. So I said some things in there that I'm not going to repeat. I went over one of my trades today with CGC talking about spy correlations and talked a little bit about longer term time frames. I'll touch on that a little bit, but I'm starting to look in the other direction. I'm starting to look bullish and that doesn't mean I'm buying bullish right now. That means that sentiment, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to act before the herd. I want to act before that sentiment shifts and I'm starting to look longer term with these monthly support levels from August lows on all of these major names and we'll just run through our analysis and I'll look at those monthly levels now. We also have the potential for the farm bill passage. There's some rumblings going on that that might come out tonight. That's worth watching. Names that are heavy in hemp, like Charlotte's Web, would have a bullish reaction to that, in my opinion. But I don't think that's going to be a kind of, you know, sector-wide catalyst for a complete turnaround. But it's something to watch out for. And it is C-Web that will have a lot of my attention tomorrow if we do get that farm bill passing. So CGC on the daily time frame did hold support. We didn't get a gap down open. And today was a day where the correlation with SPY favored the bulls a little bit. And again, I talked about that with my trade example in Midas letter, but we're looking at the support down here of 3026. Personally, I'd like to see that level break just to have one last climax flush down, capitulation kind of move, get everybody out and then look for a shift in momentum. But at this point, it's all about 3026. 3020 is also a support level there as well. So if the bulls can break 3485 while holding 3026, that's going to be a daily trend change because that will give us a higher low and then a break of the lower highs. So the two ways to play this, if you're bullish, are number one, making a bullish entry and putting a stop below 3020, although it's close enough that I would personally just use 30 psychological support. And number two would be more patient, less risk, less reward. Wait for the bull break on the daily time frame for the trend to change. The weekly time frame pulling back. And in all these Canadian MJ names, I'm noticing declining bear volume, which is exactly what the bulls want to see. So when I look at this monthly time frame and I say, wow, we pulled back really far from the all-time high and the last monthly support was 2421. And we're looking for a higher low compared to that level. And it's been weekly declining volume for the last two months of consolidation. That's when I start paying attention for bullish entries and for weekly bounces to get going. Any bounce on CGC under 46.74 will just be a lower high on the weekly time frame. So the weekly trend's not going to change anytime soon. But again, I'm getting ready to look in the other direction and to start to see the shift in sentiment. Again, I'm going to be protecting any positions that I make entries on. This is by no means an entry and you just say, all right, this is my timing now. Now I'm in a long position. That's not how we trade. And you should know that at this point by watching us. We enter the trade, we have our key level where we're going to exit and go back to cash and reassess the situation if it doesn't play out in the way that we're anticipating, because the last thing we want to do is have our money dead and tied up in a trade that's not working for us. So tightening range is forming, keeping an eye on the farm bill. Don't think it'll have a huge impact or much of an impact at all on Canadian MJ names, maybe a little bit just because the sector will you know, see some bullish response to it. But we're watching for catalysts, some kind of catalyst to shift sentiment and momentum and we don't have that just yet, but we have a support level to be watching. So that's what we're going to be watching for the rest of the week. Cron's a beautiful daily equilibrium. We have the low of the pullback, high of the bounce, higher low, lower high, higher low, double top, lower high by four pennies. And now the bulls are looking for a higher low compared to 770. We don't have enough of a bounce off the low of today for us to be confident that that is our new higher low. If the hourly trend changes, 
then we'll be confident our daily higher low has been established. So if the hourly trend changes, then 809 is our new higher low and the range is 809 to 904 and 908 double top of resistance. So keeping an eye out for the hourly trend change on Cron, but this pattern is likely to break at the end of the week or first thing next week. So we're watching for this and a potential bull entry if 904 and 908 breaks. And and I like the setup. I like the clarity. Whenever we get a tight pattern this clear, that's ideal. If we were to get a bull break, we're looking up at 995 as the next resistance after that. That's the last weekly lower high. We held the support of this pullback. So the only name right now that's looking for a higher low and then a trend change on the weekly anytime soon is Cron. And it might be TLRY. We'll look at that in just a moment. But compared to everybody else, the weekly bounces haven't even started yet. Cron has a, a head start because that support has already held and we're trying to form a higher low compared to that level. Again, we look at the monthly level and a higher low compared to the monthly is what we're looking for. And Cron is forming that the best at this point. APHA, lead bear, but again, time to start looking in the other direction. And we're going to be watching support. The only support nearby is 1015, 10 psychological as we clearly drop to lower lows. And then on the weekly time frame, next support after 10 is 862. But that's the monthly support level we're watching. Again, look at the volume. The volume's a little, a little off the last two weeks. Number one, this week has three more days to go. But number two, last week was a holiday week. But still, it's declining bear volume. This is exactly what the bulls want to see. Obviously not the size of the pullback, but in terms of volume, it's what they want to see. And the monthly chart, we are looking for this support level to hold. I'm looking for a higher low compared to 862 and a week, a weekly bounce to play out. Anything under 1760 is just a lower high, but we don't need much. A bounce to $12 gives us 20%. So I do believe there are bullish opportunities approaching. Again, I've had a bearish sentiment because there's been nothing to be bullish about. And this is really a gut check for me. This is noting where we are psychologically in this market and emotionally by perusing social media, watching Facebook groups, knowing what the charts and the longer term perspective is on these monthly timeframes. Spy bulls are holding up a little bit better now. The last two days in the S&P 500 have seen a little bit of a momentum shift. Spy is tightening its weekly pattern, which I'll go over in the spy video in just a bit tonight. But again, it's time to start looking the other way against the herd. Herd's all looking bearish, right? Just like the herd was all looking bullish heading into sales, we were looking for a sell the news event. Now we're going to be looking for the bulls to start to show up. And that's when everybody is at their highest level of despair. So Again, not saying buy now, but I'm saying I'm looking bullish and I'm looking for a, a, a bounce to last a few couple weeks or at least lower highs on these names. So end of the day was all bare for APHA and it's difficult for a name like APHA. With CGC and Cron, we have clear support levels to use, but for APHA, we do not have those clear support levels. So at this point, I need a bare minimum of an hourly trend change and then an hourly trend change would have us looking at a support level to at least attempt to play off of. So keeping an eye on APHA, ACB is similar in terms of weakness. We saw a bear break today of 725 support. We dropped down to 707, but the bulls did close above that level. So that is defending support to a certain degree by not closing below 725. But if we look at the weekly time frame, look at the volume. That is picture perfect volume. If you're a bull, if you are a patient bull with cash, you are salivating right now. This is exactly what you want to see. Huge pullback, declining bear volume. Bears are running out of momentum. And we're looking down at seven psychological support, followed by 667. Monthly time frame, to compare it to the other names, absolutely looking for a higher low on the monthly chart compared to 529. We're going to look for a higher low and then a bounce and a lower high. Market, overall market has to cooperate. Again, everything I'm saying right now in terms of the bulls showing up, if SPY dumps and breaks the low of October, that's out the window. But if SPY holds on and gives us this tightening range into the new year, then Canadian MJ could see this bounce get going. On the weekly time frame for ACB, anything under 1065 is just a lower high. But again, at this point, that's a 40 plus percent bounce. We don't need a weekly trend change to see significant bullish gains. Daily chart, anything under 815 and 846 are lower highs. I'm watching for an hourly trend change. Look at that end of the day volume for the bulls there. Bulls bought that dip to defend support. ACB has my attention tomorrow. And we need hourly trend changes at the bare minimum to start some bounce. So ideal scenario for me, I'm probably going to be looking for some entries in APHA and ACB in the next couple days this week. 
And I want to get into positions where I can put a break-even stop loss and then just let it ride and try and, and hold a swing position, but know that I have zero risk if uh, it doesn't go as according to plan. So again, this is very early. This is just me thinking aloud in terms of my mindset shift. TLRY. So TLRY is still very healthy as well. Anything above 99 is a higher low. Bulls are looking for this little higher low right now. We need an hourly trend change to give us the indication that our daily higher low has been established. So if the bulls can hold 112.05 and then break 117.56, that's an hourly trend change and our daily higher low will be established at 112.05. From there, we'll look at 117.56 breaking would mean 120.40 is next. Look at the weekly time frame for TLRY, building a base, leveling out, and now trying to get some follow through Again, volume clearly dissipating. Have to see some spikes in bull volume. Have to see the shift in sentiment. But I do believe it's coming soon. And we're going to keep an eye out for it. So my interest right now, after looking at all these charts, cron on the daily equilibrium, absolutely. Risk to reward. We're probably not going to see as much reward for the bulls on cron because it is holding up so well. And there's less, there's more resistance levels where we stand as opposed to a name like, you know, ACB. If we were to see a quick bounce, there's not a whole lot of resistances because we dumped so hard the last couple of weeks, APHA and ACB, both in that same boat. But I'm going to be watching ACB because I like the end of the day bull volume to hold 725 support. I'm watching Crom because it's a very clear tight pattern. Obviously, CGC is the leader and watching to see if 3020 support can hold. And not really interested in TLRY. I don't like the liquidity of TLRY. Uh, the bid and the ask spreads too wide for me to be comfortable. So I probably won't be paying much attention to TLRY, but other names, I certainly will be. So that's where we stand, doing a lot of thinking while I'm talking here, establishing my game plan. But keep an eye out for those bulls. Just when you think that the, the night is always darkest just before the dawn, and I do believe we're getting close to dawn, at least for some short-term relief. So again, there's no indications, technically speaking, that are telling me this is a gut feeling based on sentiment, psychology, emotions, and a little bit of the longer term charts. But other than that, nothing short term is telling me this is uh, happening right now. So just keeping an eye out for it. Let's see if the, spar the farm bill gets going and we'll keep an eye on those USMJ earnings, which are going to keep rolling out all week. Thanks again. Do some good things out there and we'll see you all tomorrow.